I paid just 200 bucks with free shipping for this 2014 11 inch MacBook Air, but is it any good? $200 is not a lot for a laptop, and even less for a MacBook, but that's exactly how much this 2014 MacBook Air cost. So the first question in your mind is probably, well, what's wrong with it? And to that I say absolutely nothing. There is not a single defect with this machine. So then why was it only $200? The low prices on these are due to a phenomenon that occurs on eBay from time to time. This computer was sold by a large tech reseller and refurbisher. You may have heard of Power On, the company that I bought my Mac Pro from back in May, and also the same company that used to handle Apple's recycling program. My MacBook Air was sold by a similar company called Tech Deals, and it was sold as part of a bulk discount as they were trying to clear inventory. Many times these companies will receive computers that have cosmetic damage, stuff that doesn't really impact the performance or functionality of the device, but that means that it's impractical and impossible for them to sell at full retail value. When there's a critical mass of these computers, oftentimes they'll put them up on eBay and try to sell them to liquidate their assets. These sales aren't too common as oftentimes the companies prefer to just take the computers apart and sell the parts individually, but from time to time, if there's enough of these things that build up, you can find some pretty good deals. Obviously, I was a little bit worried because these are bulk listings that don't have actual pictures of the device and the conditions range, so I was a little nervous that I'd end up with a real turd. But I knew that this machine was going to be functional or my money back, so I pulled the trigger. And when it arrived, I filmed my unboxing. All right, here's the box. Unusually, very professionally wrapped here. You can see the model number, i5 1.4 gigahertz, four gigabyte, 128. Come with what appears to be an off-brand charger. Yeah, it's not an Apple charger. And here we have the MacBook Air itself. Let's see what this guy looks like. <clears throat> okay, well, you can already see. Big old dent. Smaller but noticeable dent. Another dent. Let's see, can we go four for four? Yep, we can. Okay, so big old dents on all the corners. Um, honestly, it does not look as bad as I thought. It really doesn't look too, too bad. Let's open it up. Yeah, that's not, it's not awful. I mean, it's not great, but I, there's no problem with this. Okay, <laughs> disaster averted. All right, proceed with the video. Since I kind of revealed them in that unboxing, let's quickly run through the specs before we dig into the condition in more detail. This is the base model MacBook Air. In fact, it's the cheapest MacBook you could buy at the time, and it comes with a measly 1.4 GHz dual-core i5-4260U. Baked into this chip is Intel's HD Graphics 5000 that are nothing special at all, really. For RAM, we have just 4GB of soldered, non-upgradable 1600MHz DDR3 memory. And finally, for storage, we have the exact same 128GB SSD you'll find on a range of Apple products, from the Mac Minis, to MacBook Pros, to iMacs. So this guy's not in the best shape, admittedly, as you saw in my quick unboxing earlier. The display is dented in on all four corners, and there are some scratches around the edges and a good amount on the bottom case, as is common on used MacBooks. It's not the most aesthetically pleasing device, but then again, that's also partly due to this not being Apple's best from a design standpoint. In fact, let's talk about that. This is one odd-looking laptop. The proportions are bizarre, as though the MacBook Air design was shrunken unevenly to fit this 11-inch form factor. The palm rest area looks okay to my eye, but the trackpad is a little small, and the function keys look like they were chopped in half. But hey, at least it has function keys. Those aesthetic complaints are small potatoes compared to the elephant in the room. Holy bezels, Batman! These things are ridiculous! When I imagine the bezels in my head, this is what they look like. 
The longer I look at them, the more they start to look like this. Dare I say this? Meanwhile, here's what they should look like. Apart from that, the major selling points for a lot of people are going to be the classic, uncontroversial, backlit, chiclet style keyboard that is simply excellent, as well as Apple's beloved multi-touch glass trackpad. These alone are going to set this computer apart from a lot of other $200 laptops for a good chunk of people. So, let's move on to performance. Well, performance here is a relative term, and most people who are shopping for a computer like this really don't care how powerful a computer is, just how fast it is. There's a very big difference. For you performance people, the Cinebench score is 240 CB, which is just below my late 2013 13-inch MacBook Pro, my 2015 Retina MacBook, and my Lenovo ThinkPad 440S. In Geekbench, we have a single-core score of 3100 and a multi-core of about 5500. That single-core number is what most people buying this device are going to notice, and it's really fine for most tasks. If you want to play CSGO on here, uh, j don't, okay? In fact, don't bother really playing anything on here because it's just not meant for that sort of thing. What really matters is how fast it is, how smooth is the user experience, how quickly do applications open, can I watch Netflix, can I open documents and edit photos? These are the questions this computer answers, and I think it does a good job at all of those things, even if it doesn't look that good doing it. For $200 shopping for a MacBook or MacBook Pro, you'd be lucky to find a Core i5, much less solid state drives and 9 hour battery life. The fast SSDs make this computer feel way smoother and way faster than its 240 Cinebench score would imply. For everyday tasks such as video streaming and web browsing, opening documents, or photo editing, this thing will definitely get the job done, only really running out of steam when you fill the 4GB of RAM or the 11 inches of screen real estate. Thanks to fast SSDs and adequate power from the Core i5, this little guy can definitely do some light edits in Photoshop, like those bezel mockups you saw earlier, but it does run out of steam once you start applying a ton of adjustment layers. Speaking of Photoshop, let's talk about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Seamless. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in areas like filmmaking, photography, technology, and more. If you're looking into getting into Final Cut Pro or Photoshop work, it's definitely worth taking a look. And with membership costing less than $10 a month, it's really not a big monetary commitment either. You can check out Skillshare with the link in the video description. The first 500 people to sign up will get a free two months of Skillshare, so make sure to go check that out. Okay. So at this point, we need to talk about the screen. I've been kind of avoiding it, but there's no more beating around the bush. This has a 1366 by 768 display. The near universally hated screen resolution. It's not even that it's a bad pixel density on the screen, but the aspect ratio is just stupid. It's 683 to 384, which is just annoying. Translated into real person speak, this screen isn't tall enough. All other MacBook displays are 16 to 10, the extra height being very helpful in side-by-side -side applications, document reading, and productivity work. This screen is just awkward to use, and people who buy it are more than likely going to browse the web, write emails, and Word documents as a primary use for this machine, so this screen makes it harder than necessary to do all of that. Apart from the display, this thing is pretty decent for an extremely cheap Ultrabook. Frankly, this MacBook Air isn't trying to win any design awards. It's just trying to be a solid laptop that's there when you need it, and at $200, this is one of the sturdiest, most solidly reliable machines you'll find, especially on a used basis. Repairs are also wicked quick. Look how quickly I was able to completely take out the guts of this computer and put them all back in again.
Yeah, this thing is dead simple, cheap as bricks, super reliable, and just frankly, a really simple machine to use. So, is this worth it? Heck yeah. Okie dokie, that'll do it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. As usual, make sure to follow me on Twitter, at Luke Miani. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, all that stuff. Don't forget to check out all the links and stuff down in the description below, and I will see you guys in the next video.